Folks, welcome back. We're gonna start this video out a little different with me saying thank you. If you don't know, I had an impromptu live stream which was not scheduled and not planned on Friday afternoon. I talked about the surging sparks, numbers, news, and drama surrounding the set for about 20 to 30 minutes, at which point I got a call from a friend of mine, Nick, the Pokey Plumber on Instagram, and he wanted to jump on the channel with me and discuss it, and we did for another hour and a half or so. There was over 570 live viewers in that chat in the middle of an afternoon on a Friday on an unplanned live stream. Guys, I haven't seen numbers like that across the entire Pokemon investing, market, business, or finance related space. Ever since the OKJ OK Love stream, where OKJ OK Love, myself, Cool Trainer Ryan, Opossum Bud, many other creators all came on the live, and there was a big discussion debate over Pokemon investing. Obviously, the pack breaking channels like the Poke Revs, Cool Trainer Ryan's, Poke Vaults get those kind of numbers all the time. But to have that many people show up to hear an intelligent conversation about the finances behind their collectibles and not just tune into a pack break stream to just kind of turn their brains off and be entertained watching the pretty cardboard. That's a huge deal, guys. And I'm not talking a huge deal for my channel or for the Pokemon Plumber and all that good stuff. For the hobby. Guys, the video already has over 10,000 views in the first 24 hours of being released on a two hour live stream. That's insane. And this tells you the strength of the hobby and where we're at. This tells you how many more people today than before are worried about the finances behind the collectibles they're putting their money into. It's no longer people just wanting to open packs and throw them in a binder and watch packs being opened. No, no, the market's changing to more and more people worried about the market, their business, their investments, and the finance behind all this stuff. And so us being in the middle of this bull run, the best bull market we've seen since COVID, and this much attention on this side of the hobby, it tells you this isn't going anywhere. It tells you this market is going to continue to be strong and long into the future. And um, I thank everyone for showing up and showing the support, but it's less about that and more about what it says about the hobby. And so just going to throw that out there. Now, I know a lot of you enjoyed hearing me and Nick talk. Um, the Pokemon Plumber will be a more frequent guest on Nostalgianomics going forward, so you don't have to worry about that, and uh, we'll have more good discussions like that going forward. But I do want to discuss a few topics today. One of the topics is uh, the Surging Sparks topic that came up during the live stream in the comment section and the chat, and people were not really saying I was lying, but saying they knew uh, other store owners that got their full allocations, other YouTubers are saying they got their full allocations, and uh, this seems like unnecessary FOMO. So let me set the record straight. There are smaller LGS stores and smaller buyers out there, maybe who got 50 boxes or 100 boxes, and they got the same amount of boxes from Stellar Crown as they got for Surging Sparks. Or you may have other YouTubers out there who maybe order one, two, three, four, five hundred 500 boxes on a set, and they got their full allocations as well, okay? I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the guys who actually run the market. The guys who actually set those floor prices on eBay and TCG Player. The guys that are ordering four, five, six, seven, ten thousand boxes of a set. That those are the ones that matter, right? All of those guys got cut. Okay? I'm not gonna speak in all their names and numbers, but I will tell you, Eli, Pokemon USA, who I have my weekly Tuesday live stream with, he was offered thirty six hundred boxes of Seller Crown. Okay? He put in for over 4,000 boxes of Surging Sparks. He got cut to just 2,000 boxes of Surging Sparks, over 50%, okay? Which is about a 40% cut from what Stellar Crown was offered. So it's very real. Pokemon Plumber has contacts too that order similar numbers, some if not more. They saw similar cuts to their allocations. So no, it's not a lie. No, it's not unnecessary FOMO. I'm not saying anyone else is lying either. The smaller guys probably got their small, their small numbers, right? They're 50, 100, a few hundred boxes. But the guys ordering thousands, they got cut dramatically. That is why you see the market already in the 700s a case, already in the 120s a box. Now, do I think it's coming back down at release? Do I think the I'm going to wait crowd is going to be right? Absolutely not. They are going to be sadly mistaken. They are going to be in tears once again. Guys, let me... Before we get into the rest of this, let me explain something to you. 
There are a few ways that Pokemon can increase their profits, okay? They can sell more products, right? Print more and sell more, okay? They can reduce their operating costs, reduce the cost that it's costing them to do everything, which even if they sell the same amount, they're still increasing their profits, maybe not just increasing their sales. Or they can increase the price. Lucky option number three, that is the option Pokemon has chosen. They rose the MSRP in Scarlet and Violet by what? 16 plus dollars, okay? Per box. They rose the price that they're selling to distributors at. Distributors have rose the price they're selling to stores at. Meaning the stores that used to be able to buy at $80 a box are now buying at $90 a box and so on. This is why you're most likely not gonna see these $80 and $90 price points ever again in Scarlet and Violet. But the I'm gonna wait crowd is sitting back crossing their fingers hoping for this phantom price to come back. And it's not gonna come back and save you guys. It's just not. And a lot of these people are starting to move off the sidelines. And that's why, again, you're seeing increased sales volume. That is why you see Scarlet Violet Base starting to sell at increased rates that we saw month, two months, three months ago. That is why you see Paradox Rift starting to really sell at increased rates. You're really starting to see sellers disappear. More and more cases and more and more boxes sell every single day. At this rate, Paradox Rift could end up running up to $650, $700 a case, $110, $120 a box by the end of the year, in my opinion. Obsidian Flames has just hit $700 a case. Go check it. Oh, yes. There's a confirmed sale now at $700. We have multiple confirmed sales in the 120s. That is Obsidian Flames, ladies and gentlemen. Paldea Evolved has uh, stabilized in the 130s, and the cases are still in the 800s. You have some people starting to blow out the cases, but um, realistically, a lot of those sellers are going to get wiped out, and it's probably going to return to $150 a box and $900 a case. Um, seller Crown, you know, it's it's staying where it's at. There's still a lot of supply out there. It's not a ton of demand. It's probably going to sit around that price point and so on, right? Surging Sparks and Paladia Evolve. We're going to talk about this. The people that are saying, I'm going to wait. Wait for the price to come down. Wait for a reprint. Wait for a restock. Oh, Twilight Masquerade. We'll throw Twilight Masquerade in the, in the mix as well, right? 170 a box right now, continuing to rise. Probably going to be the first $200 box in the era. If we don't see a reprint or restock, that's absolutely where it's going. Mark my words. But these people are sitting there trying to convince themselves that there's going to be this magical reprint that's going to save them and they're going to be able to buy a whole bunch of product. Here's the issue. You just saw what happened when Paldea Evolve got a restock, right? It didn't drop that much. You want me to tell you why it didn't drop that much? There were only two ways to buy Paldea Evolved. It was take a bundle where you took a whole bunch of other product that people didn't want, they bundled it with cases of Paldea, and you were able to buy everything at once, okay? Or you had to pay $720-something a case from one of the distributors. Now, if you don't know, distributors normally sell these products in like the low 500s per case at pre-release at release. So the distributor rose the price about $200 on the cases on the restock. Do you really not think they're gonna do the same thing when Twilight Masquerade or if Twilight Masquerade or when Surging Spark and if Surging Sparks gets reprinted and restocked? Do you really think they're gonna sell those to stores at $5.28 a case or $5.50 a case, whatever the store is buying for? Hell no! Guys, you're living in fantasy land. They are going to price their boxes at the current price that the market makes sense. If, the, if Twilight Masquerade and Surging Sparks run to $200 a box in the next six months and they both get reprinted, distributors are probably going to sell those boxes at $120, $130. Maybe $110. And then stores are going to list them for $120, $130, $140. And so, sure, the price will drop, but it's not going to drop to the lowest prices you could have bought them at, which was a few weeks ago at pre-release, which is probably still now at pre-release. That's the truth of the matter. Not just that. Let me paint another scenario for you. Let's say by the end of the year, we get no news of a restock coming for Surging Sparks and no reprint, right? What's more likely? That the set drops or it rises? It rises, right? So what's a better idea? To cross your fingers and hope for a reprint that you can buy in it cheaper or just overbuy cases, overpay for them, right? Which is more than you normally pay right now in the market. Let them rise to $800, $900 a case sell off the extras, reduce your cost basis in the cases that you're keeping, and now you have cases again at $600 or $550.
It's that simple. Just play the market that the market gives you. And guys, it doesn't matter what I say on my channel. It doesn't matter what some YouTuber says about their allocations or what some YouTuber says about this is FOMO and, and uh, inorganic demand and hype and all that stuff. The market is going to do what the market's going to do. You can either play into that market or you can sit there and scream and cry about how the market's unfair and it shouldn't be this way. Those are your two choices. I don't care which one you do. You can scream and cry all you want. You can scream and cry in my comment section. You can talk about how the kids can't afford the cards and the players can't get their cards and all this other BS. The fact of the matter is, Pokemon is raising the price of their items, whether you like it or not. This is inflation, baby. Everything's more expensive. Your Pokemon cards are gonna be more expensive as well. You're not gonna be able to buy boxes at 80 and $90 anymore. Get over it. They're gonna be 110, 100, 120, whatever it may be, and you're gonna deal with it. Or you can just leave the hobby. It's that simple. Either you deal with it or you get mad and you leave the hobby and say it's all too expensive. Or hey, here's an idea. Go buy Japanese cards. That's why people started to buy Japanese cards in the beginning back in 2021. English got too expensive. Everyone flocked to Japanese because it was cheaper. And then Japanese got too expensive and then everyone was just mad at everybody. I mean, it's like collectibles are supposed to have value. It's the simplest statement I can make collectibles are supposed to have value. If Pokemon overprints them to the, into oblivion, the stores can't make money, the distributors will not get orders from the stores, the distributors will not be able to take more product from Pokemon, okay? If they're overpriced, they won't sell, and stores will have to reduce the cost to make them sell, and they'll have to run sales, right? This is how the market works, right? If stores aren't buying from distributors, distributors will run sales. And that way stores will buy from them again, right? They'll blow out certain products, whatever. And this is how markets work. It's very simple, guys. It's all supply and demand. If there's still enough demand at 120 a box, why would anyone in their right mind reduce the price? What sense does that make? They're selling out at 120 a box. The only logical explanation would be to raise the price and find an equilibrium where people are still buying at a high enough rate and, and you're able to raise it to the point where people stop buying. It's that simple. It's literally that simple. There's no, there's no other like, you know, manipulation tactics behind the scenes, right? Here's the other thing. If Alex wanted to manipulate an item, why would I do it with an item that even I can't get as much of as I want? What sense does that make? Right? Wouldn't I just like go to the distributor and be like, what do you guys have tons of that I can buy an infinite amount of? Uh, well, we still got a lot of Paradox Rift. You want that? How many you got? Oh, uh, we got, you know, 500 boxes. All right, great. Hold that. Give, give me that. Guys, here I am. Um, Paradox Rift is going to the absolute moon. You need to buy, 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 buy. That's what I would do if I was scummy, right? That's what I would do if I wanted to try to try to manipulate this market is I would do it with something that I could have a large position in. I wouldn't do it in something that I'm struggling to get myself. I'm just telling you the way it is. Yes, some stores didn't get cut. Any of the big guys did get cut. There's less of this than there was of Stellar Crown. Those are the facts. How you use those facts, that's up to you. Don't buy, buy, wait for a reset, reprint, restock, wait for it to go to $80. I don't care, right? But a lot of people are going to be unhappy and they're going to miss out on this set. Um, a lot of people are going to be unhappy about missing Impel D Evolved. A lot of people are unhappy about Twilight Masquerade. There's people out there still that think Twilight Masquerade is going to get reprinted and drop to $100 a box. That would mean distributors would sell it to stores at the original price of $88 to $95 a box for it to drop that low. Ain't going to happen, Timmy. It ain't going to happen. Guys, again, thank you so much for all the support on the Friday live stream and on the channel in general. I know we just crossed 14,000 subscribers recently. Um, again, that's that's... It feels great that you guys support me and support the channel, but I think it means more for the hobby in general and the finance and business and investing side of the hobby to see that many more people interested in this side of things. And that makes me more happy than just uh, you know my channel alone. To see me and other channels grow in this space, uh, it's great to see. And so uh, we got some bright times ahead of us, guys. Um, going into uh, Black Friday holiday season, it's going to be fun. Subscribe to the channel if you're not yet. Be back here in a new one soon. I'm out.